Let's dive into the Delphi murder mystery investigation, shall we? Here's what's going on today. Suspect Richard Allen, we have learned, is set to return to court next month to have a hearing on two major requests in his case. He's accused of murdering teenagers Abigail Williams and Liberty German back in Delphi, Indiana in 2017. So the hearing set for January 13th will cover these things. Number one, the prosecution's request for a gag order in the case. They want to keep everybody quiet. And the defense requests to have the trial moved out of Carroll County, Indiana, into a different county in the interest of fairness. So these two big requests come after the judge unsealed the documents we've all been wanting to see that reveal some, some, not all, of the evidence that led to Richard Allen's arrest. A major piece of the evidence was that unspent round found within two feet of Libby German's body that they say was cycled through a Sig Sauer that Richard Allen owns. Now, Ellen's defense attorneys are reacting to what's in that probable cause affidavit that was made public a couple of days ago, saying in part, quote, Rick is a 50-year-old man who's never been arrested nor accused of any crime in his entire life. He's innocent and completely confused as to why he's been charged with these crimes. All right, before we discuss, let's take another look at what we learned about the probable cause affidavit. WRTV's Caitlin Kendall has the story. Investigators say marks on a single bullet found near the bodies tie Allen to the killings of the girls. Court documents state several witnesses say they saw Allen on the Monon High Bridge around the time the girls disappeared. The documents detail an interview police had with Allen back in 2017, where he told investigators he was on the trail from 1.30 to 3.30 that day. Surveillance video shows a car matching Allen's in the area at the time of the crime. Court documents state the video Libby took on her phone shows Abby walking on the Monon High Bridge when a man wearing a dark jacket and jeans walks behind her. They go on to say one of the girls mentions gun before being told guys down the hill. That audio was later released to help with the investigation. Documents say the video ends shortly after the girls start to walk down the hill. Allen was interviewed a second time last month where he told investigators he was on the trail that day wearing blue jeans and a blue or black Carhartt jacket with the hood. Documents say during a search at Allen's home, police found clothing that matches what was worn by the alleged killer. They also found a gun that belonged to Allen. Analysis on that gun found the bullet found near the girls' bodies had been inside Allen's gun. Allen told police he never let anyone borrow it. What we still don't know is how the two teens died. Yeah, that's really troubling, right? This case has been a mystery since 2017, and we don't know how these two girls were killed. But I have to tell you, in combing through the probable cause affidavit, I have a couple of ideas on this. I want to bring in my guest to talk about it. Sudi Chata Jimenez in the studio with me, practicing criminal defense attorney. And we learned today on the show you actually served as a prosecutor yes. as well, um, which is fantastic experience on both sides of the courtroom. So one big fact that gave me some thoughts on how these beautiful young girls were killed uh, is the fact that there's a witness who says they saw a man walking away uh, from the vicinity where the killings occurred, bloody and muddy. And at first I was wondering about strangulation, but then I thought to myself, you know, you're not gonna, most likely, unless there was a big fight, you know, have blood, right? Um, and then we do know that there is a firearm at this scene. Somebody's gun. If it's not Richard Allen, someone else's because we got an unspent round here. But the state's saying it's Richard Allen's because they did some crime lab, lab testing that shows uh, the round did cycle through his gun, has markings on it that are a match to uh, ammunition that was test fired at the lab. So um, I think there are some in inferences that could possibly be drawn. Tell me what you think, uh, knowing these facts that we know today about how these girls might have been killed, Sudi. I'm a little confused about the unspent round because we all, well, at least as far as I know, when I went to the GBI and got uh, a tour on how they test rounds, what you do is if, if a bullet goes through the barrel of the gun, it's sort of like fingerprints because the barrel leaves some imprints and then that way when something shot through the casing will have those imprints and that's, you can test them to see if they match. But if it's an unspent round, 
it never went through the barrel. So I'm very curious about that science. And it might get to the experts battling over that. Because sure, it's a nine millimeter or a 40 caliber or whatever, but how do they know it went through that gun when it only went, it only got pushed up? So that's, that will be an interesting uh, way to see about the science. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's junk science. So we'll see, that might be a big focus on the so defense. You said junk science. So that's kind of what the Allen attorneys are saying in their statement. They're saying that, look, the state's hanging its hat on this scientific evidence from the lab, but this is challenged every day in courtrooms across the country. You can't trust it, can't believe it. So, um, so that tells me, they're going to have somebody independently, a firearms expert, like yesterday we had Mario Camposano on the show. He comes on Court TV from time to time, breaks down guns. He was showing us how that you could get markings with a, a misfire. He's like, the best way to think of it is that, you know, round was there, it was chambered, it was ready to go, something went wrong, likely something with the ammunition itself. It didn't expel as the projectile should, and uh, was all intact and came out. So, um, yeah, they, they probably do have their own expert, right? Um, Sudi, what do you think about the fact that the state of Indiana wants the gag order, not the defense? What does that say to you? As a defense attorney, yeah, tell me. what I'm thinking is like, maybe they're not sure they got the right guy, so they don't want all this evidence to come out because then somebody else, whatever information that only the killer would know, would, would be coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, another interesting thing, it's a rural area where I'm sure there's a lot of hunting, so there's bullets everywhere. There's probably a lot of unspent rounds. Right. And then another thing would be interesting, if they were killed by a, uh, an actual bullet, how come nobody heard it? They saw him, but that sound travels. Right, right, Sudi. Yeah, um, so the big piece of evidence that everybody saw, and I believe we have this clip, is the little bit taken from Libby German's phone that you, you see uh, this man walking, um, wearing the blue jacket, the jeans, and there's like a smidge of audio that was released uh, to the public that says, guys down the hill. I believe we have that audio clip. Um, we're gonna cue it up and um, let's take a listen. And it is really fast. Uh, you have to listen carefully, um, but let's take a look. Okay, so that was the piece that was put out in the public realm. What more has been included in the probable cause affidavit tells us that as the male subject, I'm reading directly from page two here, approaches victim one and victim two, one of the victims mentions gun. Uh, so that part was not put out in the public. One of them says gun. So, so one of these girls saw somebody with a gun. And then it says near the end of the video, the male is seen at her telling the girls, guys down the hill. Uh, the probable cause of David says these children proceed down the hill and the video ends. But the still photograph taken from the video and the guys down the hill audio obviously was put out. So people have been looking at it for a while. Um, in, in the way they've charged him, Sudi, they're saying this was a, essentially a felony murder. They're saying that a kidnapping was ongoing and killings happened in the process, how you get the crimes of felony murder. So I guess the ordering of the children down the hill, whoever did that with the gun, there's your kidnapping charge. We know that they uh, were killed by someone else. We've got the homicide here. But um, that grainy video and that voice, how easy do you think it's gonna be for the state to identify Richard Allen as being that person? Well, it's going to be challenging. It's always challenging, even when you have video, because you're going to have to, you can't just have an officer testify, oh, yeah, that's him. No, the jury is going to be the one that has to determine whether they believe that that person on the video is the same person sitting at a defense table. Uh, he does have the same build. Uh, I get, they might bring some experts about the, his gait. They might bring some experts about the voice. Uh, so it's going to be a long, a lot of experts type of trial. And sometimes when you have too many experts, the juries just get uh, lost in it. Ah, uh, they tune out, huh? It's like they're back in school and, you know, uh, <laughs> nothing wrong with school. Not saying that, just saying, you know, there are classes that, you know, pique your interest, others not so much. Sudi Chadi Jimenez, thank you for all of that.